I want to talk to you for a minute, my friends, and set the record straight on a couple of things as we head in toward the middle of January. I don't have a lot of maps to go into today. It's going to be a little bit of a different kind of a show. And first, what we're going to do is understand a couple of things together. You are a smart audience. You watch Cold Rain's Weather World, and my goal is to not just show you maps. There are a billion weather videos out there that just take you through from one map to the next to the next. My goal on this channel is to get to know you, for you to get to know me, for us to interact in the comments section, but for me to show you things that I know, that I've experienced, and that I understand to help you better understand what drives the weather and where our limitations are and where our strengths are when we talk about the weather. That way it can empower you to decipher well what you see on social media and what you watch when you watch the weather. And hopefully some of that education helps you grow in terms of your love for weather and your understanding of it. That's my goal here on this channel. It's fun. Weather should be fun. And I hear a lot of people in social media not having very much fun. There's some people that routinely post in the comments of these videos that don't seem to be having much fun. And I understand it. it's not a lot of fun when you really, really want snow really bad and it doesn't snow. I haven't seen four inches of snow in over a decade. And I love snow just as much as anybody else does. But these comments that come in that say, winter is over on December the 21st or on January the 6th are silly. And when you see those, don't get led astray by that. Don't let that pull you down into some kind of a spiraling abyss where it's never going to snow ever again. That's not true. And there's no meteorological evidence for it. We are moving into a pattern where tropical forcing is going to be moving back up. It's going to be gaining strength, moving into the Pacific. We've got a polar vortex up in the stratosphere that's going to be stretching again. And we've got a collapsing La Nina. There's nothing meteorological at all that says winter is over and that we're not going to see cold and that we're not going to see snow. The pattern is going to be variable as we head toward the rest of the winter. And I hope that we can avoid being so emotional that we can't see the evidence that's before us and just watch how things play out. You can be disappointed a little bit, but let's remember there are a lot more important things in life than whether or not it snows or gets cold at our house. There are people around the world that can't even eat, that are living in poverty. And I, and I know that's maybe not affecting us immediately, but there are real world problems that people are facing every single day. And weather is just a small part of it. Weather should be fun. I hope we can have fun together and learn together. And yeah, we're going to be disappointed sometimes. But to cancel winter and throw in the towel and be pessimistic all the time about weather is not a healthy thing. And it's not realistic either. If you disagree with me, type it in the comments section. Let me know what your evidence for winter being over is. Maybe it's not like it used to be. I grew up in the 70s and remember the 80s really well when it snowed a lot. And climate change, yeah, plays a role. Some people say harp, chemtrails, and all of the other, other things that you hear a lot play a role. I don't know, but I'm going to tell you this. Climate cycles, and we may be moving into a different cycle in the next few years. It's something you need to think about. So in any event, don't get too depressed about the weather. There are some things coming up, and I'm going to show you here in a minute that I think will hopefully give you some reason to be a little optimistic. This is the temperature departure from normal for the month of December. Can you see where the cool weather was? Yeah, it was up here across the plains, back into South Carolina and to the north and to the east. Whites, normal, and yellows and reds are above normal, and that's what we had for December. Look at January. It looks very, very much the same so far. We've got warm wheat coming up this week, and it's going to get cold again, but here is the same sort of a departure with the exception of the Tennessee Valley. Okay, you see that? So you have a, a, a real uh, beef out here in the Rockies and into the West. You folks out here are below normal in snow, I know. And uh, some of the Sierra Nevadas and Cascades are picking up feet of snow, but a lot of other folks have seen less snow than they normally do, and it's been warmer than normal. But there are some things changing in the pattern, and we're going to take a look at that. Normally, what I do is I show you ensembles. We don't use operational models to forecast way out in time. We are entering, though, into a pattern that is going to be highly volatile, and small-scale changes can affect the overall pattern in a huge way. Ensembles tend to run 
uh, and you see these mean ensemble memes posted out here on social media and in videos and things like that. And I show them too. But when you have highly variable weather, those ensemble means smooth it out. And the reality of the situation is it's probably not going to be that smooth when we get out. You're not going to have a nice smooth bowl-shaped trough in the east or a big ridge out west. You're going to see something that looks a little bit more like this. What I'm going to do today is show you the European model and the GFS operational runs just to give you an idea of what's going on actually with the pattern. All right. So we're out here at 90 days in the European. This is a big trough. Look at this big trough out here. I'm going to see if my pen will work. It shut down on me twice and I don't like it. But uh, in the event, I'll bring it back up in a minute when it comes up. This is a big trough, this blue thing. This is coming through at 90 hours. This is uh, Saturday, Jan uh, January the 10th, and here is my pin. There it is. I'm going to move it out of the picture. There's our trough right here. You see that? And here's our big ridge along the east coast where it's very, very warm, and another trough up here in the Gulf of Alaska. This is a big low. We don't like to see that because that floods the Pacific uh, or it floods the continental U.S. with mild air. But we've got a ridge going up here, so it's not hurting us too bad here. Now, watch what happens as we go out in time here and get on out toward Sunday the 11th. Look at this, a little lobe of a trough swinging through. It's going to be cool, and you got more um, troughing up here in the west. But look out west. you got a, a, a ridge going up here across the west coast. Look at the orientation of this ridge. This is what I want, I want you to pay attention to. See how this goes up? And then you kind of got these heights that sort of look like a, a slide like that. When you have this build up to this way, you're going to have a flow coming out like that. That's going to direct cool air into the east and to the south as well. All right. That's what happens in 174 hours. Now we get on air to 198 hours. And look at this big blue anomaly. See what I just told you is true. It directs that cool air, it directs energy down here into the south, and you tend to see cooler than normal conditions prevail when you have a big ridge going up and the trajectory is kind of out of the north northwest. And this is a signal for a storm somewhere in the eastern United States. It's not lined up perfectly but it wouldn't take very much of a change in the interaction of pieces of energy in the southern jet, and the polar jet, and the arctic jet, all of that to come to play to create a storm system out here. As a matter of fact, if we take a look, I'll show you, the, I'll show you in just a minute how that plays out. Uh, in any event, we got another trough coming in, another ridge. That ridge continues to maintain on the west coast, but look what, look what it does. You see how this ridge sort of rolls over, it kind of wave breaks like this. When that happens, it sends the energy back to the west. Some models indicate this happening and some models keep this ridge more upright. That is a big, big difference maker at the end of the day. The ridge rolls over, energy gets trapped out underneath it, and you get more of a ridge response to the east. But fortunately, in the European model here anyway, it builds back up as we get to 282 hours, and you get uh, that response like this. You get that trajectory back out of the north again. That's a pretty big ridge. And as we go on out here toward the end of the run, look at this, another big signal for a trough in the east. That would be very, very cold. Ridge continuing to poke well up into Alaska, sending air out of the north, across the pole here into the south. And if you line up energy just the right way, you're going to see a big storm signal or storm system developing somewhere over the south. This is actually a really good look for a storm. Now this is way out 312 hours. Will it be this way when we get out there? Probably not. Will this ridge poke way up and maintain itself all the way across the Pacific? I don't know, but this is an option that's absolutely on the table. I'll show you another option here in a second. This is the run-to-run -run change, the height level change from the last run. Look at this. Blues, where you see blues, that means everything is colder than it was the last run in these areas. And look at that. All the way through the end of the run, pretty much, until you get way out here to the very, very end, the run-to-run uh, -run change is for uh, more troughing in the east and more ridging out west, all right? So just know that's what's going on there. Here's your temperature anomalies. If we roll this back to 90 hours where we started the height anomaly map, look at that, very warm in the east, very cool here in the west. And as we go on through the time, here we get out to uh, January the 12th, cool shot coming through the east, warm shot into the plains, warm shot back into the east, 15th of January, cool again. That's very, very cold in the southeast and the east, actually. And then loading up again with more cold air back in the plains in the Four Corners region. And here comes another big blast of very, very cold air. It's a big Arctic outbreak as we head in toward 330 hours and another massive cold air outbreak set to plunge into the United States back at the end of the run. This is a very, very cold European operational 
run. All right, so that's what's going on there. And there's your energy. Look at this energy coming in at 90 hours. Got a big storm system winding up here. This is very heavy snow and even some rain out in front of that as we get on in toward uh, January the 11th. This is this is next Saturday evening, next Sunday. You've got a big storm system working into the Great Lakes up here, and that trough swings on to the east. And the next week, look at this. So we get on out to 210 hours. You've got a piece of energy down here and another piece of energy up here in this part of the jet stream. And what you want to see is this one capture this somewhere along the east coast then it'll create a storm works up the coast like that in our case here that capture doesn't take place until well offshore so the storm system is too far off the, off to the uh to the east all right so but little subtle shifts can make all the difference and that's what i want you to take away from this it doesn't take much to change the whole entire orientation when the pattern that is getting it getting itself established comes to fruition all right I don't know if I'm saying that well, but I want you to understand that we are kind of on an edge where things can go this way or that way, and oftentimes that's not the case. Subtle shifts don't really affect the pattern so dramatically, but we could be very warm in the east and then two days later very cold in the east with a big snowstorm. So you're not going to have a lot of skill in these long-range models outside of five days or so. There's too much energy. There's too many different things setting up in the pattern to keep the skill level low. Here's the GFS. Look what the GFS does. It gives you the same sort of scenario out here uh, Monday, the uh, January the 12th, but we have a little bit of a less signal for a big storm along the east coast there as we head on out down the road. you got ridging going up here in the west and a little bit less. We're out here again toward... Uh, I don't know, what is this, 207, 210 hours. Again, big energy kind of moving through the south, but it's positively tilted. It's not interacting with energy in the northern branch up here, and so they stay separate, and you get a little weak reflection of a wave that moves across, and you don't get a big storm. you got a big ridge continuing to go up. This is a cold pattern, don't get me wrong, but there's not a big storm here. Look what this ridge does out here. It breaks across, like I said, instead of the European built it back up, but it kind of breaks this way. It forces energy back this way. When you have energy going back out in the southern Pacific like that or the, the southern U.S. coast, it will build a ridge across the west eventually. You know, we're going to get, look at that, you're going to get the, the big polar vortex coming in here. And there's your ridge. It breaks off uh, up at the top. Now all of your energy comes back out this way, and look at this big ridge going up here across the eastern half of the country. It shows something totally different than the European did because of how this big ridge breaks apart out here in the west. So you see different models show different things because they can't understand everything that's going on in the atmosphere, and they use equations to sort of fill in those gaps. And because they're projecting and predicting that compounds out in time. So you understand there's no way to predict it, but what I can tell you for sure is that the pattern coming up is going to be very, very, very volatile. And we are going to see cool shots and warm shots, chances for storms, chances for dry. It's going to be up and down, at least for the foreseeable future. So there are going to be chances that it gets cold and snowy. And I want you to know that. And as we go on out in time, we'll look to see if the pattern can stabilize and we start to see these ridging and blocking features set up and begin to become stabling, stable in the modeling. But right now, that's not what we have. We have a highly variable pattern. You cannot cancel winter and do so with any sort of rationale. And you can't say that it's going to for sure be cold and snowy and the rest of the winter either. All right. So that's where we are. I just want to bring a little truth to it. I want to help you understand what's going on. There are a lot of different features kind of flying around. And that's what we do here. Let me know if you got any questions in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back tomorrow with a more normal video, and we'll have kind of a look at the rest of the week. You know, that still holds what I showed yesterday, so you can check that video out too. But uh, like, like the video if you like it, and let me know if there's anything I can pray over for you. I always want to keep you in my prayers, and I do every day. If there's anything specific, let me know. Pray for me and our family as well. In the event, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Hope you have a great night. We'll be back again tomorrow with another update. Take care, everybody. Bye.